I guess we can move on. This is also about super resolution. We are getting better and better at solving that problem. And then you're gonna use uh, ResNet type of architectures. And people have been doing that prior to this work. And they were using convolution batch norm, ReLU convolution batch norm addition. And if you remember, it's a good idea not to have any nonlinearity on the shortcut branch or any operations for that matter other than addition on the shortcut branch. And this was a method prior to this work. This is SR ResNet. The idea here is if you get rid of these bash norms, you are going to end up with a simpler architecture and that's going to give you better performance. So the big idea here is get rid of the bash norm. It is hurting your performance. And how did they come up with this idea? Through trial and error. Okay, what happens if you don't do bash norm? Maybe your network is going to have a harder time converging. But if you are already doing ResNets, maybe bash norm is not that necessary. And this is the actual architecture. You have some ResNet blocks, which are a bunch of convolution, ReLU convolution, multiplication, and then addition. You're gonna have a long shortcut from your input to the output because you only want to learn the difference. And then you're gonna do some upsampling layers, which are convolution and the shuffle operation that we just saw. You can upsample two times bigger, three times bigger, or four times bigger, do a one by one convolution, and then uh, predict your super resolution image and then write down your loss function. And that's how you're gonna converge. And it turns out that you can actually start from scratch. You don't need to do any transfer learning or pre-training of any sort. You can start from random weights. The other contribution is you can do multi-resolution at the same time. This last layer, you can have it for multiple resolutions. You do your convolution, you do your residual block, then this is exactly what you have here. These operations, a convolution and a shuffle. It's gonna give you two times bigger. At the same time, you have a parallel branch in the neural network. It's giving you images that are three times bigger. This one is four times bigger. These are shared. And then because they are all convolutional, they don't depend on the input resolution. And then you're just gonna do some convolution at the end. And whenever you have an image, a high resolution image, you're gonna create three other versions of it. Two times smaller, three times smaller, and four times smaller, and write down three loss functions per each head. Why is it useful? These parts that are uh, resolution specific, you're gonna learn resolution specific weights and biases. But before this convolution, you have some shared weights and biases, and they're gonna co-adapt to three different tasks. And then that's gonna give you better performance. For instance, this is the enhanced version with only single resolution per each resolution that you choose. And the other one is giving you better performance. And the other thing is you're using L1 loss here rather than L2 loss. It is more robust to outliers. And in the end, you are not done yet. You are gonna do an ensembling to, yes, you did some improvement in your architecture, in your training procedure, now it's time to do testing to get the best performance possible out of your neural network. You're gonna do an ensembling at the end. This is during testing, during inference time. What do you do? You're gonna create eight versions of your low resolution image. And how do you come up with those eight versions? You flip left and right. You rotate your image, low resolution one, or you, don't, or you do nothing, it's the same image. You push that, uh, through your neural network, and then it's gonna give you eight predictions. Eight, uh, this is actually giving you eight images. You push it through your neural network, it's gonna give you eight super resolved images, and then you average them out. And before you averaging them out, you need to, if you rotate it with theta angle, you need to invert that. If you flipped your image, you need to unflip it before doing the averaging and ensembling. And then that's gonna give you a super result image. And this is the data augmentation at testing time. I think I'm gonna stop here and continue next session. For those of you who have questions, I'll be around. Yeah, sure. Uh, I have a quick question for um, super resolution in general. Okay. Um, so when we're doing like classification and segmentation, um, we were doing like 
like feature learning with convolutions. And so we were thinking of the, the feature maps as like different skill features, depending on how deep we are in the network. Um, but for super resolution, how can we transfer some of that like ideology? Like are, are features even relevant for super resolution or are the convolutions doing something completely different in this context? I think in this some context, uh, the emphasis is less on the feature learning, but more on uh, function approximation. So you're approximating your function from your low resolution to super resolution. Okay, so can you kind of just think of um, each, each like of all like all the new pixels in the high res image that's kind of utilizing the receptive field of all the convolutions for pixels around it to make a better guess than something like bilinear interpolation at the what is missing yes, kind of thing. And, and actually bilinear interpolation, you can write that as convolution operations with a okay, fixed just, kernel. Just no weight. Okay. Or just You're no train weight. Weight. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's, you are in that sense generalizing. Well, it's, it's almost like a pooling operation that you would use to make more, or, <laughs> but I mean, it's not averaging to make it smaller. But yeah, no, 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 there's no way. So yeah, okay, okay, cool. Thank you. Actually, this first paper is starting from what people were doing before deep learning. They oh, had really? three steps. They had patch extraction, then they had some nonlinear mapping, and then they would reconstruct. And the idea oh. is that all three of those operations you can replace with convolutions. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. So that was the intuition why I went through that paper first. Okay. Cool. Thank you.